Billy the Kid, born Henry McCarty, started life far from legend, far from the party. His mother, Catherine, from New York's crowded streets, packed up her boys, in search of new beats. From bustling New York to Indiana's plains, where she met William Antrim, and life changed its lanes. Together they traveled, with her two sons in tow, to Cofayville, Kansas, where her new roots would grow. In that dusty town, she made her own way, running the laundry, selling land by the day. But the winds turned bitter, and her health grew thin, tuberculosis settled deep within her skin. The doctor spoke softly, said deserts held the key, a dry, healing air could set her body free. So off to New Mexico, under Santa Fe's sky, in search of relief, with hope still held high. There, in the warmth of that sun-baked land, William and Catherine joined hand in hand. A marriage beneath desert stars took its place, but time would soon darken this hopeful embrace. Billy, just a boy in a new, rugged town, watched as the world slowly broke his mother down. And though she fought hard, the illness took hold, setting Billy's path in the wild and the bold. It all began with a mother's fight, moving her sons toward the desert light. They moved on to Silver City, dust on their feet, a mining town where hopes and hard labor meet. Henry, still a boy, went off to school each day, while his mother worked hard to keep hunger at bay. By night, they'd find joy where the music would play, at Mexican dances, they'd twirl the night away. The fandango's rhythm spun mother and son, in a world where hard times could briefly be undone. But William Antrim, shiftless and slow, chased get-rich schemes that had nowhere to go. A lazy dreamer, always a step behind, he gambled away what little they could find. While Catherine toiled, keeping the family fed, Antrim's empty promises hung over their head. Silver City's harsh life took its toll day by day, and young Henry watched as it all slipped away. His mother kept fighting, though her breath had grown weak, in a world where her future seemed endlessly bleak. But through it all, Henry learned fast and learned tough, in a place where survival meant being sharp and rough. And so began the life of the boy who'd be known, as Billy the Kid. The seeds of legend were sown. They moved on to Silver City, dust on their feet, a mining town where hopes and hard labor meet. Henry, still a boy, went off to school each day, while his mother worked hard to keep hunger at bay. By night, they'd find joy where the music would play, at Mexican dances, they'd twirl the night away. The Fandango's rhythm spun mother and son, in a world where hard times could briefly be undone. But William Antrim, shiftless and slow, chased get-rich schemes that had nowhere to go. A lazy dreamer, always a step behind, he gambled away what little they could find. While Catherine toiled, keeping the family fed, Antrim's empty promises hung over their head. Silver City's harsh life took its toll day by day, and young Henry watched as it all slipped away. His mother kept fighting, though her breath had grown weak, in a world where her future seemed endlessly bleak. But through it all, Henry learned fast and learned tough, in a place where survival meant being sharp and rough. And so began the life of the boy who'd be known, as Billy the Kid. The seeds of legend were sown. Catherine grew weaker as the days dragged on, her laughter faded, her strength nearly gone. The desert air that once held hope and light, couldn't stop the sickness that consumed her fight. Henry, just a boy, watched her fade away, as each breath she took seemed further from the day. William Antrim, 
lost in his own worthless quest, chased gold in Arizona, leaving behind the rest. Alone in Silver City, Henry stood by, as his mother's battle ended with a final sigh. No husband to help, no family to call, Henry was left to bear it all. With his own hands, he dug her grave deep, carving out a place where she'd forever sleep. Beneath the harsh sky, with no one to save, Henry laid her to rest in a lonely grave. Andrum was gone, chasing a fool's dream, leaving behind what once was his team. And so the boy, with no guide, no home, began his journey, forever to roam. From that moment, the child was lost to the wind, Billy the kid's legend would soon. After Catherine passed, Henry stood all alone, but Mrs. Brown gave him work, a place to call home. At her boarding house, he scrubbed floors and swept, while his brother Josie, in shadows, crept. Josie, lost in the Orleans Club's glow, fell into Obim's grip, sinking low. The family scattered, each on their own path and young Henry struggled beneath life's wrath. He fell in with Sombrero Jack, a crooked friend, a lookout for crime, not knowing the end. Caught and thrown in a silver city cell, but freedom called, and Henry knew it well. He slipped through the bars, escaped in the night, heading for Arizona, out of sight. There with John Mackey, he stole horses with ease a pair of young outlaws, living in the breeze. But the law caught them both, locked them away, yet Henry, now bolder, wouldn't stay. He escaped once again, slipping through the cracks, riding hard, never looking back. He found himself in a bar, where men were at play, among them Windy Carhill, rough in his way. The blacksmith barked insults called Henry a pimp, then turned his fists on the young and thin-limbed. Beaten and bruised, Henry reached for his gun, a shot rang out before the fight was done. Carhill fell hard, lifeless on the floor, and Henry fled, riding fast once more. With a stolen horse beneath him, wind in his hair, he raced toward the future, a life without care. Billy the kid though the name wasn't yet known, had taken his first life, his path now fully shown. Henry McCarty left his old name behind, reborn as William H. Bonney, sharp and unkind. He joined up with Jesse Evans and his rowdy crew, riding hard for Jimmy Dolan, a man few truly knew. Dolan and Murphy, who owned the house, ran Lincoln County, ruthless and without doubts. They cheated ranchers, drove the poor to their knees, with an iron fist, they took all they pleased. Billy rode with Evans, learning the game, but soon saw the darkness behind the name. Dolan's greed was endless, his hand too tight, and Billy grew weary of a lawless fight. Then came John Tunstall, an Englishman bold, a rancher with principles, a heart made of gold. He offered Billy a different kind of life, away from the chaos, the blood, and the strife. So Billy left Jesse, left Dolan's control, found a new path where justice was the goal. Under Tunstall's wing, he learned a new way, hoping for a future beyond lawlessness and dismay. But in Lincoln County, Peace was hard to find, and Billy's past would soon rewind. With Tunstall, he thought he might change his fate, but Destiny had blood and bullets on the slate. Under John Tunstall's care, Billy learned well, how to ranch, how to trade, and break from the shell of a lawless life, where guns ruled the day, he started to see there might be another way. Tunstall an honest man, ran his land with grace, but in Lincoln County, honesty had no place. 
Sheriff Brady, in Dolan's pocket deep, sent a posse out, with no promises to keep. They came with a writ, but crooked as sin, to steal Tunstall's stock, to drag him in. Tunstall rode out, trying to reason with care, but the lawmen wanted blood, they didn't fight fair. Billy, Dick Brewer, Robert Wideman, Fred Waite, hid in the rocks, watching the twist of fate. Outnumbered and silent, they saw it unfold, Tunstall shot dead, his horse's body cold. The man who had shown Billy a different light, now lay in the dust, a victim of might. Billy's blood boiled as he watched from afar, the death of his mentor would leave a deep scar. With vengeance brewing, and justice denied, Billy the Kid could no longer hide. The Lincoln County War was about to ignite, and Billy would fight with all of his might. After Tunstall's murder, the winds began to turn, Dick Brewer was sworn in, with justice to burn. He became special constable, taking the lead, and swore Billy and the others to their righteous creed. Deputized now, they hunted their foes, but the law was crooked, as everyone knows. The prisoners they captured never made it back, just as in Lincoln was under attack. The gang took their stand, and Sheriff Brady fell, bullets from Billy and his men rang out like a bell. Retribution came swiftly, revenge in the air, but the law of the land was beyond repair. The Lincoln County War raged fierce and wild, over 200 men took part, bloodshed piled. Eighty murders marked the bitter fight, as lawmen and outlaws blurred in the night. In the end, the war came to a quiet close, and many were pardoned, forgetting their foes. But not Billy, nor Charlie Bowdray, his friend, for them, there would be no peaceful end. Dick Brewer was dead, shot down in his prime, and Billy stood alone, paying for their crime. Dragged to trial, though others walked free, only Billy the kid faced the hanging tree. The judge's words came cold and sharp, a sentence to hang, to silence his heart. But Billy had fought for something more, and soon, he'd escape, as he had before. Yet for now, the law claimed its prize, as Billy waited his fate beneath cold skies. In a cell meant to bind him, Billy felt the fire, a spark of defiance, a heart full of desire. With a plan in his mind and resolve in his soul, he broke out of jail, reclaiming control. He ended the lives of Bell and Olinger, in a flurry of gunfire, swift and quicker. With vengeance fulfilled and justice his own, he rode into the night, a king on his throne. The newspapers spread the word far and wide, don't look for the kid this side of the tide. For Billy was free, his legend was born, a ghost on the run, like a whisper at dawn. But freedom's a burden, a path fraught with fear, as he vanished from sight, he stayed ever near. Pat Garrett, the lawman, was hot on his trail, determined to catch him, to see him fail. In Fort Sumner, the shadows began to stir, where Billy lay low, with a heart that would purr. But the life of an outlaw is seldom serene, and the chase would continue, the gap would grow lean. For destiny called, and the cards would be dealt, as Billy the Kid embraced the fate that he felt. With his name etched in history, a legend to find, he rode through the West, forever unconfined. But fate would soon catch up with the kid's restless ride, as Pat Garrett tracked him, relentless and tried. In a darkened bedroom, where shadows lay thick, Billy's last moments came swift and quick. Garrett, the lawman, with vengeance in his eyes, found Billy the kid beneath midnight skies. With a single shot, the echo rang clear, 
and the legend that lived now vanished in fear. Billy fell silent, his dreams turned to dust, a life lived in defiance, a life forged in trust. The young outlaw's story would never grow old, in the hearts of the brave, his spirit would hold. Though the gunfire ceased, and the night took its claim, the tales of Billy the Kid would forever remain. A ghost in the night, a shadow in time, his legend immortal, a rhythm, a rhyme. For in the annals of history, where legends are spun, Billy the Kid would never be done. His name would echo through valleys and hills, a wild, restless spirit that time never stills. And now Billy, the kid rides on through history riding on, and on, and on he is legend he is a ghost. He is a man who fought the most. His enemies hated him. They wanted him dead. They finally got their wish. Their vengeance was fed to America and the world the kid he still reigns. He's a free spirit now the end of his game. But he's a towering figure that will never disappear to the folks that love him his legend they hold dear.